So I want to thank Podcast Movement for giving me the opportunity to try a zipper for the first time in 15 months. I made some mistakes, um, but it all came together nicely, I think. So I'm speaking to you today in a mask because I have learned this incredible shortcut for speakers that if a speaker wears a mask, I actually pre-recorded this talk yesterday and it's being played <laughs> by the AV team and all that I really have to do is make sure that my movements and gestures are synced up correctly. No, in the words of the poet Bill O'Reilly, let's do it live. And it's such a thrill to be back live here at Podcast Movement. Give yourselves a hand for being here and for being a part of this great community. And speaking of uh, a great community, how many of you are members of the Podcast Movement Facebook group? I think just, yeah, there's 65,000 people in that group. I read it every day. I at least look at something from that group every single day. Sometimes I ask questions, sometimes I answer questions, sometimes I just post funny crap. Uh, but I'm, I'm in and out of that group because it's a very helpful group, I think. And one of the things I love to see is how many different questions get asked, but also we often get the same questions asked over and over and over. So my goal today is to definitively answer the number one question that I see on the Podcast Movement Facebook group to definitively answer what I think is the number five question, give or take. I don't have an accurate accounting of this. Uh, and also to leave you smelling fresh and clean for the rest of the day. And I will accomplish all three of those things in the next 27 and a half minutes. So I have combed the Facebook page very carefully using all of these statistical tools at my disposal. And here's the question I most often see. Someone will say, my downloads have hit a plateau. Maybe that's a plateau at 25, maybe that's 100, maybe that's 500, maybe that's 5,000. But my downloads have hit a plateau. How can I grow my audience? How many of you have seen that question in some form or another in the Facebook group, right? Just about, just about everybody. How can I grow my audience? Well, using the sophisticated content analysis tools at my disposal, I have counted the number of times that that question has been asked in the Podcast Movement Facebook group. My God, it's full of stars. And the answer is one November decillion times. <laughs> this is a real number. Uh, or 10 to the 60th. And if you're more of a, a visual learner, that's a lot of, <laughs> that's how many of the zeros are in there. Uh, that's how many times this question has been asked. How can I grow my audience? And I want to tell you that there are often answers given to how someone could grow an audience, but they're not necessarily the answer to how you can grow your audience, right? But some of the answers that I see that people give, and none of these are, are necessarily completely wrong. They don't quite drive at what I'm going to get to though. But you'll see things like cross promotion and partnerships. This is of course a good idea. Cross promotion is the not so secret sauce of all of the, the leading podcast networks, right? Of course, you want to try and do that. Buy ads on podcast apps. I hear people have success with that more than uh, buying ads on Facebook, but you could buy ads on either to make people aware of your show. Uh, you can book guests with large social followings and hope that they share your content and grow your audience in that way. Uh, there's, of course, the SEO path. Search is increasingly important to the discovery of podcasts, so blog, SEO, transcripts, and things like that. And then there's my favorite answer of all, just keep plugging away. You're doing it wrong, so do it longer and harder. <laughs> all of these are not quite right. And they're not quite right for two reasons. The first reason is how we discover podcasts in general. Uh, these tactics all kind of address certain angles of podcast discovery. But I will tell you, this is a question that we ask every quarter in our podcast consumer tracker. And the number one or number two answer every single time we ask it for how people discover podcasts is recommendations from friends and family. Podcasting has always been a word of mouth medium, right? Yes, people do find things through ads, people do find things through cross promotion, people do find things through SEO, blogging, etc. 
But what makes a hit in this country in any medium are recommendations. There are a million shows on Netflix. There are a few hits. And those hits are hits because somebody told you about them. I'm watching White Lotus on HBO right now. I don't know if anybody else is watching that. I love that. I'm recommending it, right? That's how shows become hits, is that someone recommends them. So problem number one with that kind of list of things you could do to grow your audience is that it doesn't address the number one way that people find your podcast, which is through recommendations. And I'm going to give you now reason number two. How can I grow my audience is the wrong question. You stopped early. The right question is that. Why did they stop? Why have my downloads hit a plateau? Before you can ask the question about growing your audience, you need to know why they stopped. And I'm going to give you definitively the number one reason why podcasts stop growing. And I'm going to give it to you in the form of a fantastic 1970s shampoo commercial. I told my friends try Fabergé shampoo, Fabergé organic shampoo. And they told their friends, 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 and they told their friends. I wish I made that. By the way, you can buy a 1978 bottle of Fabergé organic shampoo, legit, on eBay right now for $37.99. It ships uh, for an additional $7.90. Uh, and it ships from uh, Onatogon, Michigan. And I don't know if there are any Michiganders in here, but that is clearly the land that time forgot, Onatogon, <laughs> Michigan. This is how we discover podcasts. We tell two friends. Why have my downloads hit a plateau? Because people stop recommending your podcast. There are other reasons that roll up into that, but this is the umbrella reason. If you have 500 listeners, if you have 500 downloads, and you don't get any more, it's because those 500 people or 400 people or however many it is, stopped recommending your podcast. That's it. And it could be for any one of a number of reasons, right? There are only so many things that we recommend to people. I know in business, we like to talk about the, uh, the sort of universal net promoter score, which I'm not a huge fan of. It's the how likely are you to recommend this product to others kind of question. I don't think it, it uh, universally works, right? Like, I, I can't say that I love my mobile phone company, but I've signed, I don't know, 20 years worth of contracts with them, right? I don't love my airline, but I fly them all the time. I'm likely not to recommend either one of those two things, but they've had my business for 20, 25 years now, right? But it does work with media. It does work with shows. It does work with entertainment, to have people recommend your podcast. So what I want to talk about in my remaining time with you today is recommendability, which is, I would say it's from the Latin for commend again or something like that, but I don't know. I'm a Webster. I only know the English words. Recommendability. And I'm going to give you three ways to improve the recommendability of your podcast. Because ultimately, that is how your podcast is going to grow. Is for people to tell two friends, and they tell two friends, and so on, and so on, and so on. This is the truth. The first thing is to know who you are for and why they are there. And that means understanding your audience. Understanding audiences is my entire job. It has been my career for 25 years in media research. I've done that for shows as diverse as Howard Stern and Elvis Duran and many of the leading podcasts whose networks are represented here today. Know your audience, know who they are, know why they are there, know what surprises and delights them. Because ultimately, your podcast, maybe you view it as educational, but there are a million ways I can educate myself on a topic. Your podcast is an entertainment. And so your job is to surprise and delight your audience in pursuit of whatever goal it is that you are trying to accomplish with your podcast. And to surprise and delight them, you need to know what they expect, right? You can't give your listeners the unexpected if you don't know what they expect. 
What I would encourage you to do, and anybody in this room can do this, is to do your own listener survey. And that seems like a daunting prospect for those of you that haven't done this before. You don't need to hire a company like mine to do it. You can do it yourself. Uh, and we believe that so strongly that we made one for you. We made one for you completely free. There's no registration, no email, no cookies will be collected at our website. No, just download it. Uh, we put together, the podcast team at Edison and I have put together a free template that you can use as a starting point for a listener survey of your own. You can do it on Google Forms, giveaway stickers. I had a whole uh, piece on this that I wrote about in my newsletter and there's a lot of it on that site there. Do a listener survey, find out what else they listen to. Find out what they like about those things. Begin to develop a shared vocabulary with your listeners, right? And that's going to help you surprise and delight them because they have many, many choices of what to put into their earballs. And if you want them to choose your show, it must surprise and delight. So understand your audience, connect with them. I highly encourage doing a listener survey. And I highly encourage, once you have done that listener survey, to talk about it. Talk about it on your show. Talk about how you reached out to you, our listeners, and this is what you told us. Make it a part of the communication that you have. Make it meaningful, give it value. Make people feel like their words meant something when they did this survey for you. So that's number one, I think, for recommendability. The second is to make the show easy to recommend. The platforms that podcasts are being consumed on have changed a lot. When I first started in podcasting over 15 years ago, uh, speaking at one of the very first podcast conferences back in Ontario, California, uh, some of you were probably there, uh, there was one way to get a podcast, right? You used an iPod, which is a, a, like an iPhone that you, you can't call people on, and you would download the show from your computer and you would walk around with it in your pocket, and that's how you listen to podcasts. Things are very, very different now. Things are changing fast. Things are changing even faster over the last two or three years. I'll give you an example of that. Uh, we have a, a, a survey for our clients called the Podcast Consumer Tracker. It's a large quarterly study of all podcasts, all podcast companies in the space. And one of the questions that we ask our sample of people, and I'm gonna show you here uh, data from uh, 8,000 interviews that we did rolling over the last four quarters. One of the questions that we ask is, where do, you, where do you listen to podcasts? Where do you ever listen to podcasts? And where do you most often listen to podcasts? We just released our last quarter, uh, the second quarter of 2021. We just released that data on Friday. I'm gonna show it to you. But first I'm gonna show you a year ago. A year ago when we asked this question, on which service do you most often listen to podcasts? Uh, Apple Podcasts was number one, followed by YouTube followed by Spotify, right? And in this, in the podcast consumer tracker, if it's a podcast, we don't care where it was listened to, watched, consumed, as long as it's verifiably a podcast, we measure, right? That was a year ago, Apple at 25%, YouTube at 20, and Spotify at 15. This came out to clients on Friday. One year, now, and one year in a, in a survey, by the way, where things don't change very much very quickly. It's a large sample. Things sort of move minutely quarter to quarter. This changed a lot. It did not change a lot because Apple is declining. It changed a lot because all of these other platforms are growing the space. Spotify is growing the space. YouTube is growing the space. And I can tell you that the top 10 or top 20 uh, podcasts by people who say YouTube is their favorite way to consume podcasts look very different from the top 20 by people who say that Apple is how they like to consume podcasts, right? They're different humans. This kind of goes back to step one, understanding the different humans. We did a project for NPR. It was an internal project for them, uh, but they have graciously allowed me to share a couple of slides from this. So uh, please, in your hearts, thank NPR for this, because this was a, a sort of a private project for them. Uh, and we're very grateful that they've allowed me to share a couple of slides from this. But we actually looked very closely at YouTube consumption of podcasts. We did a study of YouTube primaries, people who listen to podcasts every week and say that YouTube is the service that they use the most so that we could understand these humans a little bit. And one of the questions that we ask these humans is, 
Suppose you heard about a podcast that you were interested in listening to, but you didn't know where to find it. Where would you go first? And YouTube was the answer for 50%, and Google for another 30, 80%, basically, going to Google or YouTube, because that's where you find content, right? It kind of makes sense. Now, am I telling you your podcast needs to be on YouTube? Well, I kind of am, but think about it. Because it is the universal content search engine. It is the universal content search engine. It's at least a place to be where when you recommend a show to somebody, they should be able to find it. They might expect to find it, right? Why do people watch or listen to podcasts on YouTube? I'll give you some of the reasons here. You already use YouTube to watch other types of content. They're there already. You're not asking them to change behavior, right? Uh, you, you can listen to podcasts for free. There are a lot of people that subscribe to YouTube Premium because YouTube is very annoying, right? So they subscribe to YouTube Premium, and so they want to get the most out of that investment. They want to get the most out of that investment. So people gave us all of these reasons, uh, and we gave them some statements to find out how many people agreed with them. Uh, and you see some massive numbers of these YouTube primaries agreeing with some of these statements. It's easier to listen to or watch podcasts on YouTube than other platforms. It is for those people, right? It is for those people. Uh, the podcasts, uh, you wish more podcasts were available on YouTube. Many are not, right? All podcasts should be available on YouTube. Most of them agreed with that. It's easier to discover podcasts on YouTube than on other platforms. Uh, and my intent is not to make this a YouTube talk, but how many of you have ever watched a YouTube video on purpose and then immediately watched a second YouTube video you did not intend to watch? Yes, it's really good at that, right? It's the it is a really good content recommendation engine, so why wouldn't you want to be there, right? That's one example of being easy to share because uh, on a service like YouTube, I don't need to know if you have an iPhone or an Android. I don't need to know if you subscribe to Spotify. I don't need to know anything about you. You can probably find it on YouTube if I tell you to look for it, if your podcast is there. That's part of being easy to recommend. I'm very bullish on Facebook incorporating audio, and I know not everything Facebook does works, but I will tell you this about Facebook. A lot of people still use it. That's some data. <laughs> A lot of people still use it. Uh, is Facebook kind of diminishing? Well, yeah, it is. Uh, this is from our Infinite Dial study that we release every year in partnership with our friends at Triton Digital. Make sure you see Robot Sharon at the Triton Digital booth whenever they roll Robot Sharon out. It's fantastic. Um, we ask people who use social media, what is the platform that you use most often? And you can see here, Facebook still used most often by 47% of social media consumers. And if you throw Instagram in there, Facebook, the company, probably still doing okay, I guess, right? Um, so yes, it is kind of waning, but you know who really uses Facebook a lot? People who haven't listened to a podcast yet. This is a crazy stat, I think. That top bar is the number that I just showed you, 47% say that Facebook is what they use most often. The next is the people we already have, monthly podcast listeners, and they use Facebook most often a bit less. But 60% of people who have yet to listen to a podcast say that Facebook is the service that they use the most, right? Those are humans. They are gathered there waiting to hear your stuff. Uh, and Facebook is now going to make that more possible to trip over your content in the context of their everyday feed. And that's important. That's how things get recommended. That's how things get recommended. And that's what I really want to impress upon you. I'm not trying to sell you on one platform or another, but I am asking you to understand your audience, understand how they recommend and share content with their friends and family, and just doing the work to make that easy, right? So understanding your audience, doing the work to make recommending your content, your podcast, easy and available where the humans are, and the humans are in a multitude of places, and maybe you're not in all of those places. Every time I hear a podcast say, available anywhere you get your podcasts, I wince and I think, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure about that? Do you know where I get my podcasts? Do you know where they've been? Right?
And then the final thing I want to talk about is to master your craft. Master your craft. Whenever people ask this question, how can I grow my listeners in the podcast movement group, there are the reasons, as I mentioned, that you could give someone how they could grow a generic podcast. But the question was, how can I grow my podcast? And I will tell you that I, I'm a busy person, but sometimes I will listen to a, a bit of a show from someone who has asked that question, and I have an answer for them. And I'm not going to give it to them individually, but I'm going to give it to you all that you can always master your craft. And this is what you are doing here today. Yes, it's fun. Yes, we get to see people masked or not that we haven't seen in a long time. It's great to be social. It's great for me to finally be wheeled out of the Westworld cold storage meat locker that I've been in for 18 months <laughs> and wheeled onto stage before I eventually get put back in for processing again. Um, but don't forget, there are all kinds of ways at this conference starting today to master your craft, to master your craft. If you are looking at a particular time on the schedule and you are not sure what to go to, go to an editing session. Go to an editing session. And it is here that I'm going to answer what I think is the fourth, fifth, sixth most popular question that is asked uh, in the Facebook group for Podcast Movement. How long should my podcast be? And I'm going to give you a definitive answer for that. I'm not going to give you a waffly answer for that. I'm going to give you a definitive answer for that. This question has also been asked one November decillion times. So it's, it's pretty close there. Uh, but I'm going to give you a, a solid answer for this. How long should my podcast be? If you do this, happiness will follow. Shorter than the last one. <laughs> Why don't you try this, okay? I'm not trying to be mean here. Um, but try it. Shorter than the last one. I think there's sort of three levels of editing in a podcast, right? The first is I, I never edit my podcasts, okay? And I've, I've done podcasts where I've, I've never edited them. Um, I know uh, if, if Todd Cochran's here, Todd is often fond of, of popping in on the Facebook group and saying, I haven't edited my show in 15 years. The operative phrase in his sentence is 15 years. That's 15 years of building an audience. That's a head start. You don't have that. You have today. You have the next three days. Make the show better, right? Level two, I think, is removing the ums and the ahs. And that's where I think most of us have gotten to. But level three, this is mastering your craft. Take a show of yours and get a transcript. Get an ugly, uncorrected transcript of it and read it. And experience true horrors. <laughs> you know I'm right. Edit that transcript and then do the show like that. Or edit the show to be like that. Right? And there's a number of reasons for this. And I'm not here to tell you that your podcasts have to be short. I'm telling you that all of them can be a little bit shorter. And not for time purposes, but for clarity, for driving to the point you want to drive to. Even in an interview, there is a revealing truth in an interview is everything that is on that show driving to that revealing truth, or, or is it wasted words? And you don't have time to waste words. You don't have time to waste words, right? I listen to a fair number of podcasts. Uh, in fact, I'm going to show you a little exercise here. This glass is six hours and 45 minutes. That is how long the average weekly podcast consumer listens to podcasts every week, six hours and 45 minutes. That's this glass. This picture is all the podcasts. It's not to scale. <laughs> now, I listen to a lot of podcasts because it's my job. I start every day listening to Up First from NPR and Curiosity Daily, which I think uh, Ashley and Cody from that show are doing a virtual presentation on doing a daily podcast. Check that out. I listen to that. I listen to Bill Simmons a couple times a week. Uh, I listen to the new media show with uh, Todd and Rob Greenlee. I listen to that every Saturday. They know because I, I, I taunt them. Uh, and I listen to uh, the Anjuna Deep Edition, which is a music podcast. So it's the kind of music I really love. Um, who here has a podcast in the front row that's brave? What's your podcast? Womanhood Decoded. How long is it? Mm -hmm. 
it's hard to find time for people to take on a new show. Something else has to go. Right? It's hard to find time. Something else has to go. So find ways to make your show drive to a point cleanly and clearly. Uh, I do a podcast every week that's basically me re reading my newsletter aloud. I do a newsletter, which I would love for you to sign up for, uh, at TomWebster.media. Or uh, I, I hear things with a .gs domain. Shout out to uh, South Georgia and the Sandwich Islands, which are not places you want to visit. You can ask Shackleton for the GS domain. Uh, and my podcast is me reading my newsletter aloud. That's it. My newsletter is about 2,000 words every week. Uh, and the podcast comes in at about 12 minutes or so, right? And I've already spent time on the writing. I've spent time on the craft. I've edited it exactly the way that I want to do it. Am I telling you that you need to script everything, that you need to edit and script everything to the last detail? Um, no. I mean, it's hard to script a conversation, right? But I am telling you that you can be prepared without sounding like you're being prepared. I have written and rehearsed every single word that I'm saying to you right now, multiple times, right? Because I want to master my craft. I want this talk to be better than my last talk. So master your craft. That should be your goal for the next three days. Yes, the parties. Yes, seeing people. It's super important. I missed you all. But master your craft. Be recommendable. It is quite a thing for someone to recommend your show to somebody else but it is a craft and not a gift. You can all do it. If you do one level of work more than you have been doing, you can do it. It is a great time to start a podcast. It's a fantastic time to start a podcast. Master your craft, be recommendable, and your hair will also smell fresh and clean. <laughs> Thank you very much.